Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me in this new episode. And actually, thanks for joining us because I have a guest, as you could probably tell in the title. My guest is Tanya. She is an energy healer, empowering women through family constellation work. And she's going to tell us everything about it. So hi, Tanya. Thanks for being here. Hi, Morgan. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So we connected and you, you started telling me about what you do. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so fascinating. And like, I, I know a little bit about family constellation, but very, not much, not much. Yeah. Uh, and then you were talking about the handwriting and how you help your clients life change. So let's start from the beginning. How did you start your journey as a business owner, as an energy healer? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's an intense one. <laughs> yeah. um, intense one. So I, you know, in my twenties, uh, being an art student uh, at UCLA, I began to observe my thoughts hmm. and I began to realize like, what is this thing that is the mind? It's like, it doesn't stop. It's cyclical. It, you know, what started first, the chicken or the egg, like there's no, you know, definitive answer. And so I started to dive into meditation and reading books like Alan Watts and, um, you know, books on Zen and uh, um, Eastern philosophy and, and even and, and religions, you know, and I began to have these uh, experiences where I'd have these feet, you know, where the mind would stop and I would have these moments of no thought. Mm. And it was like, wow, it was so exquisite. And I was like, oh, I want to, I want to learn more. I, how do I access this more fully? And so I ended up in an ashram. I, I went on this, uh, this spiritual journey uh, started doing yoga and I started doing yoga because I was dealing with some some depression mild depression and a counselor was like you should consider doing yoga and I was like okay so mm. I so I did that but then it was interesting because everything it like my my whole body began to change and I was like oh I got to do this so I went and I did this yoga teacher training and it was so um life-changing and actually during my training i had this kundalini awakening now i didn't know at the time that that's what had happened to me and it was this experience i describe it as you know i got a mantra and so i was just doing what they told me okay i'm going to sit and i'm going to do this mantra and i was just like so focused and my desire for awakening was was really strong and so I'm in this meditation and I feel myself getting lighter and lighter and I see what it looked like from the inside, like I was filling up with light and I was getting, it felt like I was going higher and higher and higher and higher. And then suddenly I heard this loud roar, like a lion's roar. And I was like, scared the crap out of me. And I was like, holy shit, what was that? You know, I mean, I never experienced that. So I like immediately shut down my, I stopped my meditation just like abruptly, like the fear or the, the way it startled me was so intense. I was like, whoa, what just happened? Um, at the time, I didn't know what was happening. I just thought, wow, that was weird. And I just continued on. But what happened after that is I started to have all these very um, strange physical symptoms that came out of nowhere. My digestion shut down, my hair was falling out, I lost all this weight, I was having out-of-body experiences, panic attacks, like my whole world just turned upside down and I didn't know which way was up and I was like, oh my God, I don't know what's happening to me. So I entered this, I just call it the dark night of the soul. Um, where I felt completely cut off from life, from my emotions, um, and I eventually left the ashram because my health became so bad. I had chronic fatigue, 
So the thing that helped me the most with this, this process that I was going through, which was essentially a purif purification process, but I had, um, I had zero support. My, you know, n I went to doctors, they couldn't tell me what was going, they, they just thought it was all in my head. Um, I went to alternative doctors, you know, everything, nothing worked. And the only thing that gave me some relief is that I found a Reiki practitioner and she gave me a session. And I remember, I'll never forget, going to see her for the first time ever. I had never worked with a clairvoyant. I'd never worked with energy healing or Reiki. It just, someone had recommended it. So I went and on the drive there, like the Kundalini surges were so strong that they, it, was, it was like hitting the top of my head and it was painful. Like it was just felt like there was a hammer just, you know, knocking at the top of my head and I couldn't even sit up straight. So I was like driving like this to my appointment, like, wow. oh my God, like I just got to get there. So I get there and she lays her hands on me and it was the first time that I could take a full deep breath and I just felt finally like relaxed. So I was like, whoa, what is this? You know, and so I worked with her for a long time. Um, I ended up uh, having this uh, encounter with a uh, very spiritual man who it was, I, I'd say he's a devotee of Christ really. He prayed over me. I didn't know what was happening. I had no connection with with Christ at all. Um, but something happened, and literally overnight, I felt my soul come back, uh, and I just had this profound realization that I had spent my whole life trying to please others and to perform for others. I mean, I was extremely talented. I was really good at school. I mean, I was like the teacher's pet, like everything, you know? And I realized that my whole life that I was trying to prove my own worth mm -hmm. and performing to, for others. And what I realized is that I am loved because I am. And so, after this, this deep, profound opening, and even the dark night of the soul, what was revealed to me, it's like, oh, we are more than what we realize, and there's more to reality than what we can see. And so that was, you know, that was 25 years ago. And so since then, you know, I went on to study Reiki, I went on to um, um, sit with other, you know, masters, like, uh, you know, Krunamayi and Amachi and Adyashanti. And, you know, I just really just fervently was like, wow, I want to learn more about this. And, you know, how can I, um, I felt driven to want to, to share what I've come to realize and, and learn modalities that, that actually really help people. And uh, I discovered that, you know, first it was Reiki and I found that people were having profound experiences through the sessions that I was giving. And um, let's see, where do I go from here? So, so yeah, and so throughout all this time, and then I came upon family constellations, you know, this other model. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, that whole quote in the Bible, it said something like, knock and seek and you shall find, knock and I will answer kind of a thing. So it's like every step of the way, every time like I had a question like, oh, okay, what are, so I kept learning these modalities that are not commonly known um, because I was seeking for solutions um, to things that, um, that are not given answers to by the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
so yeah, over the years I have found like, okay, what has worked for me is this combination of energy healing. And then, you know, I could talk more about the transformative handwriting, which is another tool that I've come across that I have found as I've applied it to myself um, has really been transformative. So everything that I bring to my clients is work that I've done on myself, mm. you know, and that I have found like, okay, this is, you know, this is good stuff. And I'm sure probably that's probably the case with most people, right? Like they find something that is like, oh, wow, this is, this works and I want to share this. And, and so that's, that's how I, um, that's how I've come to arrive to all of this. And, and it's an ongoing journey. It's not mm. like, you know, um, you know, they say like chop wood, carry water, you know, you, you have, maybe a profound experience or a deep insight or an awakening. Uh, and it's really like, okay, what's next? You know, it's just an ongoing journey. Yeah. So definitely. Yeah. And uh, I really find it fascinating about the transformative handwriting that you do, because like you and I were discussing like a few years ago, I cannot remember, maybe in 2018 or something like that yeah. I really became annoyed with my own handwriting uh -huh. and it's like well being left-handed you know the cliche with left-handed people I mean at least here oh, in France it's say that, yeah. that left-handed people have terrible handwriting I don't want to generalize I'm not saying it's the case for everyone I'm just talking about cliche but yeah. if there was a cliche I was the cliche <laughs> you know because you know, had a very small handwriting and all of that. And then I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. this is also the analogy for like, if you're, once again, in my case, I had a very small handwriting, like very introverted. Like I wasn't taking the space that was mine in society. I was withdrawn. So my handwriting was small, you know, yeah. when you learn how to write and things like that. Yeah. So I think it was in 2018. I'm like, no, the, 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 that's ridiculous. I hate my handwriting. So I retaught myself how to write in a way that would make me happy. And mm. now I, I cannot say I love my handwriting, but I'm getting there. You know, I, I like it better, let's say. Uh -huh. but then you and I met and like, wow, that's amazing because I had never really. Yes, of course, it's about muscle, muscular memory, right? Like yeah. wiring the brain and all of that. But I it, like the way you introduced it to me was even deeper about the way uh, some letters are shaped and yeah. things like that. So uh, would you like to tell us a little bit more about this, yeah. how you help your clients through this as well, as well as, yeah. well as your other modalities? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when, you know, when you were saying, uh, oh, my handwriting is really small. So a graphologist was, would look yeah. at that and say, you don't want to be seen. Yeah, that was the you case. Know? People that write really small, they don't want to, they're terrified of being seen. So it, yeah, so it gets revealed. Um, so yeah, there's so many different uh, things that show up in the handwriting, uh, your gifts, your talents, and also your challenges. Um, and I wanted to touch upon a little bit about left-hand writers. Ooh. So um because they are unique. My husband's a left-hand writer. I've worked with a couple of people who are left-handed writers. I'm like, it's really interesting how many left-handers I've been meeting recently. Right? <laughs> um, but I'll give an example. So in the handwriting I teach, um, let's just talk about the letter T, okay? The capital T. Mm -hmm. So as children, when we write in cursive, the lowercase T, we're taught to cross the letter T in the middle of it, right? You don't oh. put the crossbar at the top. You put it, you cross it in the middle. You make a cross like this, right? Okay, well, we're, yeah? we're taught differently in France, at least. We are taught yeah. like the, the bar being on the, at the top and not okay. crossing completely the, like it was just, so I'm, I'm showing with my fingers. So of yeah, course, but you cannot see in the podcast, yeah. but like this is the bar and the, we are only like yeah. only this, you know, like okay. this. So, so you might have been taught a different, well, here in the states you're taught to cross it like right and really okay. pretty far down low like in the middle and so what that does one it cuts off your potential oh. cuts off your potential um 
And as a left-handed writer, a lot, and I don't know if this is the case for you, but most left-handed writers, when they cross their T's, instead of going from left to right, they go from right to left. Yeah, that's from is that right the case to for left. you? Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, right to left because it makes sense when you're. It just feels comfortable to go right. like this instead of like that. Yeah. Well, when you do that, you are going into the past. Oh, and it's oh, and there is a tendency for uh, self sabotage. Ooh. Now it, it it it's you know, um, so when you change it from left to right, you are rewiring your brain in a way that you are basically creating a new neural pathway that orients you to be looking towards and moving towards the future. Wow, that's so you so when you cross it at the top and you're crossing it from left to right, you're basically you are embodying your fullest potential. You are you are, you know, making that it, it's a stand. And you know, and the letter T, for example, it's the the letter of the visionary. Ooh. So it's all about vision. It's all about your um you are that you're um i'm sorry i'm i'm hang on it is the that that your spiritual stature fuels your vision so you know those upper zones so in the handwriting there's different zones right there's some letters that go all the way to top some that go below the baseline there's letters that are more in the mid zone so each of those zones correlate to different parts of the body um you know, the upper zone, that's all about like spirit, um, being philosophical, like reaching, reaching um, up towards the divine, you know, mid zone is about how you interact in the world, uh, lower zones have to do with, uh, you know, your sexual energy, your, your physical energy, you know, just think of your roots. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many things like what when I came across this, what blew my mind the most, and so I have a background in Waldorf education. So I am an Wait, educator. Um, I have a background in Waldorf education. So I am also a teacher. So okay. when I, you know, I studied Rudolf Steiner, he talked his, the core thing about uh, Waldorf education is this connection between the head, the heart and the hands, right? That's what makes us unique as human beings is that, is that connection. Um, and you know, you want to educate children from those three different, um, aspects. So you don't want to just educate the brain, right? Um, you want the brain to be connected to the heart, to be connected to the hand, you know? And so he, he, um, there's a, um, there's a subject in Waldorf education that is taught to children, which is form drawing. So. I already had an understanding of the importance of the hand, moving the hand on the paper through form drawing. So pushing, so then looking at handwriting through that lens, and when it was explained to me that I, as a child, and everyone in the United States that's my age or younger, um, was taught the Palmer method of handwriting. And the Palmer me method is an extremely unhealthy form of handwriting. It's got different formations that what it does is, and this is, this is, um, you know, this has been proven through graphology, uh, which is a science, you know, it's used in forensics. Mostly people know it as, you know, to be used in forensics, um, that this, this, type of handwriting wires us in such a way or it, it creates a society of sheep basically you know herd mentality the sheep following just following do what you're told um, it can um, um, foster anxiety depression addiction like all these unhealthy patterns so when I go back and I think about my own experience, it makes me wonder, wow, like, did I have that 
you know, because I had unknowingly unhealthy handwriting, did that contribute to my, you know, fear of authority, uh, stuffing my emotions, you know, not reaching my fullest potential, not able to cl create clear boundaries, you know, all of these things, it, you know, it makes, it makes me pause to wonder that's, that, is that why I went through that dark night of the soul, or at least part of the, what contributed to it? Probably, I would say probably, uh, because um, I had, um, I took an old journal of mine and I shared it with a, uh, a, a well-known graphologist and she looked at my handwriting. She's like, oh, yeah, you have a lot going on. Like, there's a lot of overwhelm here. Like, oh. you know, and, and so, you know, how, how you space your letters, where you write a page. Um, there's just so, there's just so much there. And so when you, when I work with clients and I begin to teach them, okay, like, first of all, there's no good or bad handwriting. There's no judgment. It's just a different, there's just different experiences that we're creating, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh my God, you have the worst handwriting ever, like blah, 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 blah. It's not, it's not that. It's just like, we don't know what we don't know. Right. We just, right? So un until you start to realize like, oh, okay, what happens? And so I, I take clients step by step. Okay, so we're going to start here. You know, we're going to start with this one letter. You know, you're going to take your loops out of your D's. Why? Because lowercase D is all about self-identity and you don't want to be hiding things from yourself. So what begins and so what begins to happen? And so it's it's not like this practice isn't like it doesn't require you to believe me, right? In fact, I wouldn't want you to believe me. I want you. I wouldn't want you to just blindly mm. believe everything I tell you. It's like, for example, you know, I give someone the lowercase d, and I'll say, okay, so you need to take out the loop in your lowercase d, and form it this way, because the lowercase d is all about self identity, and you don't want to. The loop in there is hiding. Uh, you're hiding things from yourself. You're lying to yourself. So you know, taking that loop out. So what begins to happen is the whatever issues that are in the tissues will begin to come up to be healed. So it is this transformative process and naturally you'll 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 begin to let go of things that no longer serve you and it's not um it's so subtle and graceful in, in a uh, um, gentle way of allowing things that need to be let go to just naturally fall away. So for myself, for example, you know, I've been doing the handwriting every day for a couple years now. And one of my um, core issues has always been, ever since I was like an infant, is digestive issues. And it's definitely something I've inherited from my mother. She had digestive issues. I had digestive issues. And so like the diet was always something that I struggled with. You know, it's like, okay, yes, I know I have, you know, candida. I'm supposed to eliminate wheat and dairy, but oh my gosh, but I'm so addicted to those things. I don't want to let them go. And so every time I would try to go in on a candida diet, I was like at battle with myself. I could it was like I was miserable. Yes, I was avoiding all those things, but my mind was still like constantly craving those things, right? Mm. And honestly, it wasn't until I changed my handwriting where I was like, okay, yeah, I'm ready to deal with this, these digestive issues. Uh -huh. And since then, and since I've like, so yeah, you know, currently I'm working with a naturopath. I'm like, okay, I, you know, I told her my symptoms. She's like, yeah, you, you, you have candida. I got all tests. I'm like, yep, I knew that already. <laughs> and she's like, okay, well, and I already know what I'm going to have to do. So I get it. I'm going to have to cut all these, these things out. But the difference of going at it this time, instead of falling back, falling off the horse, falling off the wagon, and um, falling back into old patterns and being tempted and 
letting myself be tempted. Um, I found since, and, and I know it's the handwriting, now that, now that I'm going on this healing journey with my, with my diet, my gut, I don't have that resistance anymore. It's like, it feels, it's easy. It's pos like, I don't even think about sugar or going like, oh, I really want a chocolate chip cookie and, and lamenting over it. It's just like, yeah, whatever. I'm just not eating sugar anymore. Mm. And I'm, and I'm, I'm feeling much better and wonderful, you know, so things like that can happen and it can change your relationships too. I mean, I will say that, you know, my partner, I, um, he's someone that he's, we're very opposite. Like I love doing all new things and he's like, I just have my way and I'm really good at what I do and this is how I do it. And I don't like, to, you know, I don't want to change, you know, reinvent the wheel, let's say. Um, but I, um, he's, you know, like I said, he's a left-handed writer. So at first he was extremely resistant. I'm like, honey, you've got to do this. Just try this. Just, just write these letters for me. Like just, and he would do it, but he wouldn't do it every day. I mean, it was like pulling teeth and, you know, I'll admit I definitely, um, <laughs> was kind of imposing my will upon him. <laughs> so but I was like, damn it. No, this is good. You know? And so he finally acquiesced and he started changing his handwriting. He's like, Oh yeah, I, I definitely feel it. I can feel the shift. Mm -hmm. And what I have come to notice is that it has brought greater harmony into our relationship. So my husband's name is Carl. So most people have what they call in graphology hooks in their C's. And what's so funny to me is that when I had my handwriting and analyzed, she told me, she looked at my handwriting. She's like, do you, I don't know why my thumb. Oh, interesting. <laughs> do you know why? And she, she said, do you butt heads with your partner? I was like, oh my God, yes. All the time. We're butting heads all the time. She was like, well, it's because the hook's in your C. So we're going to take those hooks out of your C. And, um, and so, of course, you know, I had my husband, okay, try take this hook out of your C and just do, do your C's this way. And definitely less headbutting, less art being, we're less argumentative. It's, it's really interesting, really interesting. So this handwriting truly can, can change all aspects of your life. So not only relationships, the letters are connected to the physical body. Um, so, uh, healing uh, using the letters to heal physically you know help assist in healing physical symptoms um uh boosting your self-esteem even addressing you know your relationship to abundance you know things like that it's all there um so it's something i'm super excited about and what i love about it it's tangible it's not like, okay, you're going to have to sit and you're going to have to be really good at visualizing. And I'm not, I'm not discounting visualization as a method for healing and changing your life. I visualize, I do visualizations for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely another tool that can be used. But for people that struggle with things, you know, that struggle with meditation, like, oh, meditation, like my husband doesn't meditate. For him, meditation is going out and going for a hike and being in nature. Like he's not going to sit there and do a mantra or sit cross-legged and right. be in silence. So like he's going to fall, own, right? yeah, he's yeah. going to fall asleep, you know, mm -hmm. but this, um, the handwriting practice is, it's tangible, it's simple, it doesn't require that you have to spend, you know, an hour at it every day. It's like my handwriting practice, it takes me 10 minutes. You know, bare minimum, 10 minutes every morning, I do it, I'm done, and I let it go, and I just live my day. Um, each, you know, each of the letters is, um, has a letter of, or has a declaration of intent. So each letter has a meaning. You know, like I, I had said, the letter T is about, you know, my, uh, 
my spiritual stature is in alignment, uh, you know, fuels my vision, right? Each letter has a declaration of intent. Each letter um, is connected to uh, a, a spirit animal, an you know, an angel. Like it's it's so profound. And so, what was fat? So what? Again, like everything that I've learned, I have tested on myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I investigate myself. Nice. So I remember one time I was inscribing a certain letter and, you know, working with my, my mentor, I had this dream about a white hummingbird. I was like, huh, that's interesting. And there was this whole dream about this white hummingbird in my bedroom and I was having to free the white hummingbird. She was, it got caught in the cage, like all this stuff. And I shared it with my mentor and she's like, oh, did you know that the hummingbird is associated with this letter. I can't recall what the letter was. She says, that's the letter that you've been writing. And I was like, what? Wow. So it's, it's, it's like archetypal. I mean, it's deep. It's like, you know, when you think of Joseph Campbell and the archetypes, right? And, and myths and things like that. These are, it's part of the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with letters. So they, they, um, like there's no way that somehow in my subconscious mind, because I was writing that certain letter, it invoked the, the hummingbird in, in my subconscious mind. So I had to dream about it, but I didn't know that consciously. Mm. So it is, it, so to me, it was like this confirmation of, okay, this stuff is really deep. Right. Um, and it really is, it's, um, and it's about getting out of the ego. So this transformation, it's not, um, it's getting the ego out of the way and reconnecting you to who you really are. So those innate, noble soul qualities that you have already within you, they're there. It just, the handwriting then is, allows them to come out as we, you know, heal the issues and the tissues and and get rid of the negative programming rewiring mm. our brains so that oh, yeah. we're you know getting rid of these these patterns that have just been instilled in us since childhood right yeah uh, anyway yeah thanks so much for sharing that was, <laughs> you know, was like, i know it's a mouthful <laughs> no no that's great you know i have my notebook and Pen because I'm taking notes to write the, the description of the podcast and I was just drawing teas just so you know as I was listening to you yeah yeah <laughs> oh my it, god that's so brilliant I love this kind of things because like you said like the fact you connected with the hummingbird without knowing it, it's just a, like you said the collective consciousness the subconscious because everything is energy and we are constantly tapping into all kinds of things that our brain can always Bathroom because there would be information overload and we would go crazy so it's just yeah. the, like the filter but because you were focusing on that you are ready to receive the symbol so that's really really cool yes. so how do you like would you like to tell us more about your services where people can find you what type of sessions you offer i will put everything in the description anyway yeah. for people to to click your link and follow you and book sessions with you but let us know. Yeah. So yeah, I have different ways you can work with me. If you're um, interested in learning more about the handwriting, I do have like a 10 day, I call it 10 day uh, discover, um, discover your soul journey. I think that's what I call it. Anyway, it's a 10 day journey with me one on one. I look at your handwriting. I look at your family tree. I look at your name. And um, basically you know give you an analysis and then uh begin to uh start to change your handwriting over 10 days so that gets you started to like you know is this something i want to go deeper with you want to go deeper than then we can after the 10 days i have different options there's that so i have also a three month program it's called reignite your life it's a one-on-one -on -one program 
and we do a really deep dive into family constellations. So I find the family constellations and the handwriting really work well together. Mm -hmm. um, and so you receive a family constellation session with me uh, every other week. So you get six family constellation sessions and we really dive into, okay, what are the things that are holding you back from pursuing your desires and connecting and, and connecting to your soul purpose and really, you know, getting out of being stuck in the rut and, and, and not feeling fulfilled. So like really tapping into, okay, what are your core desires? What is it that you really want to be doing? Okay, so what's holding you back? And so in the family constellations work, we look at and really pinpoint, okay, where did that originate? Because it didn't start with you. Mm. Started with your parents, right. your grandparents, great parents. in this, so we're gonna we're gonna shift that, and so you have six sessions to kind of dive into what is showing up and and transforming mm -hmm. that, and then we dive you know get into the handwriting. I start um, coaching you on how to you know giving you certain letters that you can practice every day, um, and then you also get uh, what I call uh, new earth consciousness soul charts. So that's uh, quantum energy work where we work with your intentions and uh, in shifting the um, really the, the quantum fabric, the, the, the energy uh, that is within you and around you so that your intentions can then anchor in more deeply and, uh, and your, the healing and transformation, transformation manifestation that you're seeking can actually begin to show up. And then you also get a daily, we get daily access to me via WhatsApp. So think, as things come up, you know, you can message me back and forth. You can share your handwriting with me, um, you know, process the family constellations work that we've had together. Um, and so there's that option. Um, my website is newearthconsciousness.com. Um, you know, you can certainly book one-off sessions if you just want a singular family constellation session, that's available. If you want an energy healing session, that's available. Um, and right now I don't have the handwriting up on my website. So if that's something that you're interested in, you'll have to just send me an email or message me on Facebook. Um, and yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. That's wonderful. Yeah, so yeah. like I said, for everybody listening, I will put all the links in the description so they can follow you or you like on Facebook. I will, well, you will give me the all the yeah. links anyway. I don't know if you're on Instagram, but you're on Facebook for sure because that's where we met yeah. and your website and all of that. So this is really fascinating. Thank you so much. And I also love what you said about names and you and I had started talking about that, but we didn't cover this in the podcast but maybe another episode for another day yeah <laughs> for sure the, the the impact of our name is so big that's also something that is fascinating how everything shapes us like it's always what came first the the chicken of the or the egg like did you choose this name because you chose these lessons or you know or did this lesson come because you have this name so you know it's it's so fascinating yeah so thank you very very much for having been my guest it was really nice I really appreciate so everybody make sure to go and check Tanya check the description thank you so much Tanya and I will see you guys in the next episode take care bye-bye thank you Morgan bye. goodbye everyone